Sedina, California, for the 48th annual Rose Bowl football game. The Gophers of the University of Minnesota meeting the Bruins of UCLA. From the famed Rose Bowl in Pasadena, a football field and a stadium packed to capacity with 100,000 fans, and in every instance, drenched with beautiful California sunshine. On one of the finest football days in the history of the Rose Bowl, and this is the 48th Rose Bowl contest, Today we have the Minnesota Golden Gophers coming back for the second year in a row under their great coach Murray Warmath to try to avenge last year's 17-7 loss to Jim Owens' Washington Huskies right here in this same field. And if Minnesota is to avenge that defeat, they're going to have to handle the single-wing-minded UCLA Bruins under coach Billy Byrne. To say that the conditions for the game are ideal is the understatement of the year. During the night, last night, at 4 a.m. this morning, for example, the temperature here in California was 64 degrees, one of the warmest early morning days in the history of the Tournament of Roses. And as the teams come onto the field now, under a fine and brilliant California sun, the temperature in the high 70s and hovering near the 80-degree mark. On the field down below, the magnificent marching band of the University of Minnesota. UCLA, under Billy Barnes, comes into the game with a record of 7-3. and three. UCLA, located right here in Los Angeles, an enrollment of 18,770. Navy blue and gold are the cool school colors. And, of course, today's opponent from the Big Ten, the University of Minnesota, comes from Minneapolis. We were in Minneapolis, so a couple of weeks ago... And the snow was about knee high, so there's quite a contrast between what the Golden Gophers left and what they find here today in sunny California. 30,846 are enrolled at the University of Minnesota this year. The colors are maroon and gold. UCLA behind the single wing playing of, in particular, tailback Bob Smith and Mike Hafner rolled to an impressive seven and three record this year. They scored 26 touchdowns. We're not aerial-minded, at least for the scoring thrust, having scored only four touchdowns via the pass. Most of the plays run by UCLA see the tailback go either outside on a sweep or at the tackle slots, with the hard-hitting fullback, Almos Thompson and Mitch Dimkich, going straight ahead on power plays. The UCLA defense has been a stout defense all year. In 10 games, allowed opponents 121 points, at the same time, UCLA scored 182 points. UCLA's line is heavy, mobile, but remember, it is a short line. It is a line that does not have much altitude, in other words, up front. The boys do not have great height, and therefore are vulnerable to the pass. Minnesota, under Murray Warmath, and Murray's just completed his eighth year of coaching at Minnesota, goes with a T formation. Their great All-American quarterback, Sandy Stevens, is the man that uh, leads the destinies of the Gophers. His great play is the rollout, run-pass option. Also, the rushing defense of Minnesota has been particularly brilliant. Using primarily a 5-3-2-1 defense with the linebackers doing a lot of stunting this year. Minnesota allowed opponents in nine games a total of only 75 points. 140 points were scored by the Golden Gophers. Get this, rushing. Minnesota held six of its nine opponents to 72 yards or less rushing. So the UCLA Bruins in the single wing this afternoon going to be tested and tested very sternly. Sandy Stevens, the most valuable player in the Big Ten Conference this year, and the first quarterback that the University of Minnesota has ever had qualify for All-American honors in 52 years, this year established a lot of new records. He had the most touchdown passes in a single season, nine. The most touchdown passes in a single game, four against Illinois. The most yards gained by passing in a single season, Stevens had 794. The most yards gained by passing versus Big Ten teams in a single season, 757. On and on it goes as Sandy Stevens rewrote many of the records in the Big Ten and Minnesota annals. Of course, Bobby Smith, the great tailback of UCLA, was named his team's most valuable player. He was All-American, honorable mention, 
and he is the kind of a boy that picked the club up this year, scored 85 points himself, and with a fine assist from second string tailback Mike Hafner, these two lads gave UCLA's single wing a lot of punch, a lot of power. We'll have more of the pregame activities here at the... We are at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, ladies and gentlemen, and only minutes away from the kickoff that will send Minnesota and UCLA against each other for the first time in football history. And both, of course, are seeking their first Rose Bowl victory. The Gophers are playing in their second Rose Bowl game, having lost to Washington 17-7 last year. The Bruins are making their fifth Rose Bowl appearance, having lost to Michigan State in a 1956 game, to Michigan State in 1954, to Illinois in 1947, and to Georgia 9-0 in 1943. Ladies and gentlemen, in our broadcast booth today, we are going to share the microphone with one of America's finest sportscasters, Mr. Fred Hessler. Fred will do the play-by-play -play call in the first half, and I will have the pleasure of doing the play-by-play -play call on the second half. I think at this time, we should call Fred in, say good afternoon, Happy New Year, and uh, have him set you up with the opening lineups for today's 48th annual Rose Bowl game. Fred Hessler. Thank you very much, Kern. A real pleasure to be with you here on the Rose Bowl this afternoon. The Minnesota band certainly made an impressive appearance when they came on the field, and the UCLA band, which has prepped very much for this big game, doing likewise. Here are the probable starting lineups for the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers, coached by Murray Warmath. It'll be Sandy Stevens, 60, 214-pound senior from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, starting at quarterback. Bill Muncy, also from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, 5'11 and a half, 198-pound junior, starting at wingback. At left hand will be Dave Mulholland from Fargo, North Dakota, 6 feet, 188, a senior, and a fullback, Judge Dixon from Clareton, Pennsylvania, 6'2 and 214. The ends, right end, Bob Deegan from Lyons, Illinois, 6'2, 202 pounds, senior. At right tackle, Bobby Bell from Shelby, North Carolina, 6'4", 214 pound junior. At right guard, Robin Teller from Coleraine, Minnesota, 6'8", 215 pound senior. At center, it'll be Bob Frisbee from Cutbank, Montana, 6'3", 220 pound senior. At Left guard, Captain John Malvana from Wilmington, Delaware. He's a senior, 6'1", 210 pounds. At left tackle, Carl Eller from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 6'5 and a half, 234 pounds, and a very fine sophomore. At left end, senior end from Wilmington, Delaware, Tom Hall, 6'1 and a half, and 194. The UCLA event continues to perform on the field below us. In just a moment, we'll have our national anthem, but at this moment, we'll give you the UCLA probable starting lineups. Bob Stevens will be blocking back. He from Venice, California, 5'10", 194 pounds, senior. At wing back, Kermit Alexander from Los Angeles, 5'11", 187 pound junior. At fullback, alternate captain Almos Thompson, 5'10", 198 pound senior. He's from Los Angeles. And at tailback, Bobby Smith of Compton, California, 6 feet, 193 pound senior. The left end will be Don Venna from Los Angeles, a senior, Don is 6'2", and 205. The left tackle, Foster Anderson from San Gabriel, California, not too far from the Rose Bowl, 6 feet, 235, a senior. At left guard, Frank McCary from North Hollywood, California, a senior, 6 feet and 222 pounds. The center is Captain Ron Hall, 6 feet, 205 pounds, senior from Los Angeles. The right guard, our strong side guard, as the UCLA Bruins system utilizes, 6'1", 215 pound, Tom Payton from Glendale, California, a senior. At right tackle will be Marshall Shirt from Anaheim, California, 6'2", 235 pounds, senior. And at right end from Memphis, Tennessee, Chuck Hicks, 6 feet, 191 pound, also a senior. Those are the probable starting lineups for the UCLA Bruins against the Minnesota Gophers in this Rose Bowl clash here this afternoon under ideal weather, as Chick Harn so beautifully outlined for you. The officials for today's ball game are Robert E. Ramey Meyer, the referee. The umpire is Jim F. Leinberger. The head linesman, Dwight B. Wilkie. The field judge is George P. Wilson. The back judge, Rudolph E. Hansen. And the timer is Roy E. Kimmins. Those are the officials for today's ball game, plus the starting lineups as the UCLA band forming uh, there with the color guard coming down toward this, the west end of the field. 
before Clarence Soil, the UCLA band director, passes. And in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, will be swinging down to the field for the national for the national anthem. And following that, this football game will be underway. And now here it is, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. For the national anthem, the Minnesota band comes back onto the field once more with the colorful mascot, the Golden Gopher himself, uh, coming in, uh, coming in between the ranks. And the Minnesota band joins the UCLA band here in the playing of the national anthem in just a moment. Very colorful, impressive ceremony down here at the Rose Bowl before 100,000 people. of showing here last year has made an impressive pregame showing again this year. Have spent years developing a practical gas turbine engine that will provide outstanding economy and performance. For more information, see your Chrysler, Dodge, or Plymouth dealer for a free booklet about this remarkable new kind of car. Even though the trip for the UCLA Bruins is only a bus ride away and the Golden Gophers and their contingent had to come a long way by air, by train, and even by automobile, there is a good contingent of Minnesota fans on hand, and they're making their presence known this afternoon. We're getting set for the toss of the coin down below us. The captain of the Minnesota Gophers is John Mulvenna, the captain of the UCLA Bruins, Ron Hall with alternate captain Almost Thompson representing them. UCLA won the toss and will we say we'll see now the goal that the Minnesota Gophers have elected to defend will be the south goal to our right the field here runs north and south at the Rose Bowl a final shake of hands there by Captain Ron Howell and almost Thompson his alternate for UCLA with John Mulvenna the captain of the Gophers and now Mulvenna the captain of the Gophers and now, Mulvenna goes back to Coach Murray Warmath, gathering the boys around them. Now, there may be just a few changes in the starting lineup, depending upon uh, the defensive substitutions now that the Gophers will utilize at the start, and we'll name them for you, the exceptions to the probable starting lineup that we uh, gave you just a moment ago. This should be one of the real great ball games that we're going to see here this afternoon. And right now, the Bruins are... Departing the other bowl game scores today, by the way, were in the Orange Bowl, LSU 25, Colorado 7. In the Sugar Bowl, Alabama 10, and Arkansas 3. How about that Cotton Bowl set of chicken? Uh, the best we've got on that so far is three quarters with uh, Texas leading Mississippi 12-0, Fred. Well, check generally speaking... Uh, with the exception of that one, perhaps, uh, they have been formful so far today. So far today. And in this one, Minnesota is favored over UCLA. Murray Warmath has come here this year with all of his boys, determined to avenge last year's loss to Washington. UCLA, hopeful of winning its first Rose Bowl game. It should be a tremendous afternoon. The football weather is perfect. As someone sagely said, this would be a great day for Graham McNabee. McNamee to be describing 
the scenery all around the Rose Bowl. Mount Wilson in the offing, beautiful, high, and towering. Further, we see Mount Baldy, snow-capped and glittering in the sun. But down below, we see the football, 22 great football stars, the five officials, and here is your game announcer, Fred Hessler. Ready to do the first half of the ball game, Jack Dixon will be kicking off for the Minnesota Gophers. Back to receive Kerwin Alexander and Bobby Smith for the UCLA Bronx. Here's the kick. It's a deep kick toward Kerwin Alexander. He takes it one yard inside the end zone. Out he comes. 5, 10, up the middle, 15, 20, 25, 30. Spilled on the 30 to 31 yard line by Julian Hook from Robbinsdale, the junior, who is in there in place of Malvetta on defense when the Gophers are in that situation. They've all made it much of the year. Malvena, a very fine blacker, and Hook, a very fine defensive performer. Now it's first and 10, UCLA on their own 31-yard line. The ball in the hash marks from the right sidelines. UCLA breaking out of the huddle. They serpentine out to the left. Their wingback, Kevin Alexander, is split wide to the left. Bobby Smith is the tailback. Signals called by the blacking back. Who is Bob Stevens? Swinging wide to the left, getting around one man is Bobby Smith, the tailback turned in, a loss of three to four yards. Bill Muncy coming up from the secondary to hit him back on the 26 to 27 yard line. So Bobby Smith attempting the sweep wide to the left, loses five to the 26. It'll be second and 15. Second and 15 for the UCLA Bruins, just beginning the ball game. UCLA having taken. The Bruins come out single wing to the right. Flanker out wide to the right again. Bobby Smith, the reverse, give it to Kermit Alexander, cutting back on the inside, reverse, 5, 10, 15, the 40, the 45, the 15, the 45, the 40, the 45, the 40, 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 the Alexander is in his normal wing back position and he ran the inside reverse that time 33 yards to the 42 yard line where Munsey got him for Minnesota all on the hash marks in from the left sideline. Sandy Stevens also assisting on the play. Playing safety. Assisting on the play. Playing safety. Single wing to the right this time with a flanker out wide. A pullback delay. No, it's the tailback carrying Bobby Smith. Instead, on a direct snap from center, delaying coming back up the middle, getting about two. Teller and Frisbee assisting, bringing him down. No score here in the opening minutes of play, but the UCLA Bruins and a big burst of 33 yards by second down and eight to go just outside the 40 of Minnesota. And a flanker out wide to the right. Bobby Smith, the tailback, rolling out, shooting a pass out here. It's complete on the 31 yard line. Getting away is Kermit Alexander down to the 25 before he's brought down. Just inside the sidelines. He danced dangerously on the sideline for a moment. Cut in. Sandy Stevens got him on the 25, first and 10 UCLA. Bobby Bell assisting that pass play good for 16 yards. And a ruin first down. They put the ball inside the 25 on the 24. It's almost Thompson again who is flanked out wide to the right this time. With the wing back in the normal wing back position, taking it on the inside, reverse Alexander, dragged down from behind, gets up to the last scrimmage as Bobby Bell. The giant fine tackle from Minnesota hauls him down. He picked up no yardage on that play. It'll be second down and still 10 to go. The ball about 20 yards in from the right sidelines. No score. UCLA and Minnesota at safety. Here again, same position, single wing right with the fullback, a flanker out wide to the right, reverse. On the outside, reverse, Alexander going wide up to the line of scrimmage, the 20 inside, the 20 fights his way to the 15, short of a first down by about a yard on the second and 10 play. Tom Gutman in a strong side end with a fine block, paving the way. Bobby Bell and Bob Frisbee linebacker brought him down. The ball is put on the 15-yard line of Minnesota. It is now third down and one yard yard inside the end zone out to the 31. It's been Kermit Alexander on key plays so far. Standard single wing to the left this time. The running room is to the right. Here's a drive off left tackle by the fullback. Almost stops and put the first down down to the seven yard line. Almost stops and hit by Tyson finally on the seven yard line. That's first and goal now for UCLA. First time the fullback has carried the ball, and a timeout has on the seven-half yard line of Minnesota. 
Ball exactly on the seven and a half yard line. They line up single wing to the right now. UCLA with Bobby Smith in the tailback position. The blocking back is John Walker. Here's a drive by the fullback. Taps it, getting only about a yard. Not much more. A big pileup across the middle. Julian Huck, the key man in on the stop. Almost Thompson, the fullback from Los Angeles. 5'10", 198. No score here in the opening minutes of play. UCLA having taken the opening kickoff. Having driven from their own 31-yard line all the way now to the again with a single wing strong side of the right ball comes back this time to Bobby Smith the lane coming off the left side bumped hard as he reached about the six yard line and hurled back several yards by Paul Benson in, in place of Bob Frisbee they put it on the line of scrimmage at the six yard line the Gophers have been a real tough ball club to score upon as all of their foes have found out this year particularly when they get in the line Again, single wing, strong side of the right for the UCLA Bruins. Covers with a 6-2-3 defense, but the linebackers in very tight. A sweep to the right. Smith looking for a target. His hit back here on the 12th and 13 yard line before he could get one away. And now it'll be fourth down. Robin Keller was the man who hit him. He found no target. And he got a good rush that time. Hall and Mulholland were doing a good job. And his receivers were all covered. So that now it's going to be Little Ezell Singleton coming into the ball game, undoubtedly to do a little holding here as the Bruins may elect to have Bobby Smith try a field goal, 28-yard field goal. The ball is on the hash marks in from the right sidelines at a slight angle. It's placed here as the boot by Bobby Smith up there. It is just over the crossbar. It's good. And UCLA takes a 3 0 Bobby Smith, field goal from the 18, a 28-yard field goal, just gets over the uprights. Check. Well, Freddie, that drive started on the 31 after Alexander made a fine, the 32-yard return of the kickoff, moving out from a yard deep in the end zone. And then UCLA, seeing its hopes for the touchdown bogged down when Smith was trapped for the six-yard loss on third down and goal to go from the sixth. And making his fourth field goal in seven tries this year, the... Uh, 189-pound senior from Compton, California, Bobby Smith, UCLA's most valuable player, scored 85 points this year, and now he's got 88 as he kicked her from the 18-yard line. Now, in college football, remember, the goalposts are 10 yards from the goal line. That means the ball traveled 28 yards. Actually, it traveled about 29 yards because it just barely got over the upright. But UCLA's Bruins, underdogs, are out in front, 3 to nothing, and we're ready for the kickoff and Fred Hessler. Here's Bobby Smith doing the kicking off. It's a short kick. It's coming down to the Minnesota 15, 18-yard line. It's brought back by the Judge Dixon up the middle. He gets up to about the 33-yard line. A big pileup up the middle as he is hauled down by several Bruins, including Mitch Dimkitch. Dimkitch plays right half defensively in the uh, three deep, coming in in place of fullback almost Thompson for the Bruins. The quarterback is Sandy Stevens for the Minnesota Gophers. Bill Munsey is the wingback, Dave Mulholland. And Judd Dixon are the deep backs here. In the slot to the left here is uh, his wing back. Here's the handoff to Dixon, finding a big opening, getting five and out to the, it's Munsey, out to the 43-yard line. A fine opening there on a slant off left tackle. And he moves it out to second down and about two to go, out to the 43-yard line. And using a slot formation here again, with Muncie in the slot out to the right this time. Muncie comes back in motion. They give it to him on an inside reverse. He gets the first down up to about the 47-yard line. That should be good for the first down. Tackle that time was made by the entire middle of the UCLA line. Ball is on the 47 in Minnesota territory. UCLA leading 3 to nothing here in the first quarter of play with 7 minutes and 14 seconds to go. Out of the huddle come the Minnesota Gophers. Sandy Stevens, the quarterback, using again the slot formation. The end, however, is fairly tight. The right end in quite tight. The Bruins are in the 6-2-3 defense. The give by Sandy Stevens is to his full. Driving up the middle is Judge Dixon up to the middle of the field, to the 50-yard line. He's tackled at that point by Phil Oram, who has come in in place of Marshall Shirk at right tackle for the UCLA Bruins. Phil Oram is a junior from Bellflower, California. It'll be second down. 
A UCLA substitute eagerly coming out of the field, so eagerly, sophomore John Walker replacing Bob Stevens at blocking back, but he stumbled before he left the blocks. At the sideline, Walker replacing Bob Stevens at blocking back, but he stumbled before he left the blocks. At the sidelines over there. Again, slot formation to the right. Here is the second down play. Here's the gift to Mal Holland, sweeping wide, cutting in. He's up to the 47 in UCLA territory. He's dragged down by Joe Bonds of UCLA, playing in the guard position. He's from Rock Island, Illinois, a junior. The ball has moved into UCLA territory for the first time. UCLA consumed a lot of time with that first drive that netted them a field goal by Bobby Smith. Third down on the 47-yard line. Third down, three and a half to go. Strong side of the right as Muncie is at wing back on the outside right. Well, Holland goes in motion to the right. Stevens rolls out to the right, stumbles back here, and falls down on the line of scrimmage. His footing gave way on about the 50-yard stripe. And Phil Oram, along with Nell Prophet, made certain that he stayed down. So here is a fourth down play. He actually lost a yard. The turf gave way as he cut. Even though, of course, this is a perfectly beautiful day here in Pasadena, California. That time, now they shift from a T formation. Goes back deep, normally about 15 yards, and Bobby Bell does the centering. He normally plays tackle. He centers it back to him. Here is the boot by Sandy Stevens. The kick going into the UCLA territory, the 23, the 20. They let it roll. They can't handle it. Good coverage. Down to the 10. Inside the 10, it rolls dead. Tom Hall and Kyle Eller both down there to cover it. And uh, with that hop and with that coverage, the Bruins had no chance and did not elect to try to run it back. They take it just short of their own 10-yard line now. Sandy Stevens heading off a very fine punt. That one was good for 47 yards net by Sandy Stevens. Seven yards net. Single wing to the right, UCLA. Just inside their own 10-yard line. Fumble back here at Minnesota. I believe it's recalled on the six-yard line. Judge Dixon recovers. Almost Thompson. A pullback, fumble, and it is recovered by Minnesota's Judge Dixon on the six-yard line. And here is a golden opportunity. This is a ball game that everybody felt would be won or lost on mistakes because both of these clubs are very fine defensive units. And now it's up to the UCLA Bruins to dig in. But UCLA in front, 3-0. Sammy Stevens quarterbacks the team. Wing back outside of the right. Utilizing his wing back, coming back on a reverse, cutting in inside the five, down to the four-yard line is Muncie. Chuck Hicks, the strong side end of UCLA, brings him down, but he came to the three-yard line, picking up three yards. It'll be second down and goal to go on the UCLA three. That's a big go-go from the rooting section of the Minnesota Gophers. UCLA digging in now. They lead 3-0, but Minnesota recovering that fumble is a golden opportunity. Again, the wing back outside of the right comes back in motion. Stevens gives off Dixon down to the one-yard line. That hurled back hard. Hurled back hard by Bobby Smith of the secondary along with Chuck Hicks. Actually, he would have gotten into the end zone had not Smith come up to help out Hicks. The ball is on the one-yard line now as Judge Dixon got it down there. Third down for Minnesota. Again, it's Muncie, wing back on the outside, balanced line. Sandy Stevens diving into the end zone for the touchdown. Stevens on a quarterback keeper into the end zone for the score. Fred took the great Golden Gophers just three plays to score after Dixon recovered Thompson's fumble on the six. It's six to three, and now they prepare here for UCLA, the 12th one they've lost. Here's Blaska holding the boot by Leckler. is high in the air, and it is good. There's time out on the field with the score. Minnesota seven and UCLA three. 
Brett Hessler with Chick Aaron here at the Rose Bowl where Minnesota's Golden Gophers have just gone out in front 7-3 with 2 minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Judge Dixon getting set to kick off for the Gophers now with Bobby Smith and Kermit Alexander back to receive. He kicks very deep one this time, going way back deep in the end zone and beyond it. So Dixon really boomed one beyond the end zone that time. A yard beyond it, it fell and Kermit Alexander there probably were a few gales here and there. Possibly that might have blown one further. Again, it's UCLA's new formation with the fullback flanked out wide to the right. Tailback is Bobby Smith. Long count here. 6-2-3 defense on the part of the Golden Gophers. Inside reverse, Alexander. Hit on the line of scrimmage this time. He gets nowhere, loses a little. If anything, a stick Inga, a very fine senior linebacker from Richfield, Minnesota, brings him down. Now Jerry Jones comes into the ball game in place of Judge Dixon. Jerry Jones from St. Louis Park, Minnesota, sick 391-pound junior. John Walker in for Bob Stevens, a blocking back for the UCLA Bruins. A loss of about a foot on the play. Let's call it second down, 10 to go. UCLA trails Minnesota 7-3 to three with 2 minutes and 11 seconds left in the first period here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Out of the huddle come the Bruins. And this time... It is the end over with no profit split wide to the right. Back to pass is Smith. Hit as he throws upfield incomplete on the 35-yard line. He was racked up very hard by John Campbell in at right end, who did a very fine rush on Smith. The UCLA Bruins use an unbalanced line on occasion with what they term an end over. Occasionally, uh, in the T formation, it has been called the swing T by some coaches, but it's a situation where they bring in the left end and flank him out wide to the right with the right end in tight in his normal position. It does make the left tackle eligible. This time, they line up with the fullback flanked out wide to the right this time. Smith, the tailback, single wing to the right. Comes back to Smith. Inside reverse again, Alexander mobbed as he reaches the line of scrimmage and gets absolutely nowhere. The Gophers pretty well set for those inside reverses now. Leckler and Jim Wheeler also in a tackle now in place of Carl Eller. Bring him down. Wheeler from Robbinsdale, a senior, 6'3", 220 pounds. Keith Jensen now is in to do the punting on fourth down and ten as the Bruins gained nothing in three plays. Keith Jensen is here before his family moved west. Jerry Pelletier is the single safety man. Keith Jensen looking into the sun. He'll kick from about his own 10-yard line. The snap back. That's the kick away. Just gets it away. A very high kick. Pelletier signaling for a fair catch. Almost fumbling it back on his own 36. And there is a Minnesota man down. And it'll be first and 10 for the Minnesota Gophers on their own 37-yard line with 57 seconds remaining as there is a charge timeout here on the field. Check. Fred, I think that one of the switches that Minnesota has made now to contain UCLA's reverse. The first time Alexander handled the ball in inside reverse, he scooted 33 yards. Since that time, he has not gained an inch. Minnesota has alternated from a 6-2-3 defense to a 5-3-3, and they've been doing some stunting. In other words, they would line up perhaps with three linebackers, and just at the final count in the UCLA single wing, they'd jump another man into the line, and they've been staffing that line pretty well and plugging up the holes, particularly at right guard, where uh, Alexander likes to head for on the inside reverse. Dick Enga from Richfield, Minnesota, 6'2", 203-pound senior, the boy shaken up on the play for Minnesota, and uh, I know that all great football fans and sportsmen across the nation sincerely hope that this boy will be back up on his feet and able to play some more this afternoon. Here are some final scores in other games. In the Orange Bowl, LSU 25, Colorado 7. In the Sugar Bowl, Alabama 10, Arkansas 3. And in the Cotton Bowl, the final. Texas beat Ole Miss by a score of 12 to 7 over, takes a look, and now we go back to Fred Hessler. The right end split with the slot man to the left here this time. The Bruins with a 6-2-3 defense against the Minnesota Gophers who take over a pitch back here to the halfback to Jim Cairns in there, running back up the middle, cutting diagonally a little bit to the left out to the 43-yard line for a gain of about six yards. 
Play began here on the 37-yard line. It'll be second down and four to go. Tackled by Dave Gibbs, who's in its strong side end for the UCLA Bruins. Other Bruins in there. Giselle Singleton is playing safety with Rob Smith, one of the three deep backs. Slot formation to the right here by the Minnesota Gophers. The two linebackers for UCLA in very tight in their six-man line. The slot man is in motion. They give to Cairns. Coming back this way, wide to the right, out running to the opposition, turning the corner up to the 50 to 46-yard line in UCLA territory for the first down. He was finally brought down by Ezell Singleton along with Tom Payton. So this is a first down for the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. Time running out here in the first period. And that is the end of the first quarter. Jones in the backfield, John Campbell and John Park from Aiken, Minnesota. 6'3", 195-pound senior is in at the left-end position in place of Tom Hall. Slot formation again to the right by Murray Wormath's Golden Gophers. The slot man goes in motion. Here is the give. It's to the fullback, Jerry Jones, stopped as he reaches the 45, hurled back by Tom Payton from Glendale, California for UCLA. Payton playing the strong side or right guard for the Bruins. Seven to three, Minnesota leads UCLA beginning the second period of play. Minnesota, the advance there inside the 45 to the 44 yard line, second down, and it'll be about seven to go. Ball in from the hash marks to the left. Wing T to the right this time. Rolling out to the right, Sandy Stevens shoots a pass to his wing back. Cairns complete on the 40, down on the 37-yard line as there's also a penalty marker dropped. A penalty marker is dropped on the play as well. Kermit Alexander and Bobby Smith teamed up to make the tackle here on Cairns, the wing back who took that pass out on the right flat. A clip is called here against the Minnesota Gophers and this will put them back in their own territory. From the point of the infraction, it puts them back to their own 48 to go. But however, it's second down and 16. Here's Sandy Stevens back to pass, shoots one diagonally to his left behind the last scrimmage to Cairns, up to the 50, up to the 46, and out of bounds across the way near the 45-yard line. Hit by Mitch Dimkich who plays a right halfback, one of the three deep employed by the UCLA Bruins in their 6-2-3 defense. The ball is on the 45-yard line, third down play coming up for the Golden Gophers. Time and the indication has gone out of commission. It's third and eight to go here on the 45 in UCLA territory. A split end and a flanker wide to the right this time. The other two backs split. One of them... King goes in motion, jump pass, keeps it over to Stevens, now rolls out, throws a pass up to the 24 yard line, down immediately is Cairns, who is the receiver, that'll be first and ten, beautiful play by Sandy Stevens, the quarterback, he leaped up into the air as if to hurl a jump pass, came back down on his feet with the ball, rolled out to his right, then fired it upfield. Ezel Singleton playing safety, made the tackle on its first and ten, Minnesota, just inside the 25, a play good for 23 yards. So Sandy Stevens, as he has on that third down play all the year, has come up with the big one. Wing T to the left this time. In motion goes his wing back. And a fumble out here. It's still a loose ball on the 30-yard line. Let's see who recovered. I believe UCLA recovered right there. King fumbled. And it was recovered by UCLA's Ron Hall. He went bouncing around there on the 25. And for a moment, it was a crazily bouncing loose pigskin. And UCLA, by virtue of this recovered fumble, has stopped a Minnesota drive that looked to be at a turn 25. Minnesota leads 7-3. to three. UCLA uses the end over formation. Hafner at tailback. Swings wide to the right up to the 30 to 35, the 37, 38 yard line before he's brought down. Jerry Jones backing up the line, hauled him down. Nice block in there by Mel Prophet who is the end, who swings over in that formation. A yard to go for UCLA on their own 39-yard line. Mike Hafner is the tailback, Bob Stevens the blocking back. They have a split left end here, wide to the left. This again is the 
uh, same situation that they have been using. The ball comes back, and here is a drive off the weak side here by Kevin Alexander, and he is up to the 46-47 yard line. Nice block by Tom Goodman, and there is a surprise play. And that is a first down. Benson and Dave Mulholland teamed up to bring him down. The ball is moved to the 46 and a half yard line on their own territory for UCLA. They serpentine out of it, out of it to the left and have a split left end as well. Here is Hafner carrying on a sweep. He is rushed, hit behind the line of scrimmage with a beautiful tackle by All-American Bobby Bell for Minnesota. A loss back to the 43 and a half yard line. A loss of three yards. And there's a Bruin shaken up on the play. An official timeout charged to UCLA as a UCLA man is shaken up. Check. Uh, just putting the glasses down there in the field trying to see who that is that's injured. Fumbles have played an important part in the ball game already. One of them costing UCLA a touchdown to Minnesota that gives Minnesota the lead here by a score of 7-3 to as we play in the second period under beautiful blue skies, a warm California sun at the Rose Bowl. Frank McCary, second down, and here's Fred Hessler. Don Venna back in it, and Smith is in a tailback. He's the end over, and Bobby Smith shoots a pass on a penalty marker play that is blocked. His pass is blocked and falls incomplete, but there was a penalty marker on the play. Now we'll see whether or not this is a penalty against UCLA or Minnesota. It is against UCLA because they are checking with Minnesota to see if they want the down to stand or whether they want the Bruins to be assessed the penalty, which evidently is for, it is, backfield in motion, and it is being declined so that it is now third down for the UCLA Bruins and 13. Because just before that uh, injury there to a, a Bruin player who is and 13 back in their own 43 and a half yard line. They send Don Benna flanked out wide to the right this time. The ball comes back to Bobby Smith. He rolls back the throw, he's being rushed, throws one upfield, a good directed pass for Kermit Alexander out of bounds. And incomplete. Up on the west sidelines, Dave Mulholland, Judge Dixon doing a good job of coverage. And Smith was being given a considerable rush by this huge Minnesota line. Back into punt formation. The Bruins, when they do shift, use Kermit Alexander, the wing back, as the solitary blocker as Jensen stands now on his own 30 line of scrimmage the 43. Here's the boot. Oh, that was almost blocked. He gets off a long kick down to the 23-yard line. Pelletieri evades one man, is tackled by the second and third. Goodman was the second man to pick him up, and he got assistance from Marshall Shirk, and that was all for Pelletier, who makes a two-yard return. That kick all the way to the Minnesota 23-yard line, return to the 25. 37 yards on that kick. There is a timeout charge to Minnesota. There is timeout on the field with the score, Minnesota 7, UCLA 3. Pretty well squared away on that. I believe so. Play resumes here now. First and 10, Minnesota on their own 25-yard line. Bruins ends are in tight, though it's a widespread formation. A pitch back, penalty marker on the play, taken by Dixon up to the 27-yard line. Sandy Stevens on the uh, pitch out that time, keeping it until the last possible moment, but there is a penalty marker. I believe the UCLA Bruins may draw an offside here. They're talking to Captain John Maldena. His option is this. The gain was and Dave Mulholland and Judge Dixon. The ends are Bob Began and Tom Hall. Tackles are Tom Leckler and Carl Eller at the moment. Slot formation to the left this time. First and five on their own 30-yard line. They lead seven to three. The slot man in motion to give to the fullback. Judge Dixon threw for three, four yards up to the 33 to 34 yard line, short of a first down, but with a second down play coming up, Joe Bounds from Rock Island, Illinois, brings him down. The Bruins have just a few out of staters on their club. They are the Bounds brothers, Steve and Joe from Rock Island, Illinois, and the 
puck is not running. They're both set at 10.56, but that's not the time remaining. It's second down on a yard to go for the Gophers on their own 34. Here's a easy first down by Bill Muncy on a slant. And it's first and 10 for the Gophers on their own 36 to 37 yard line. Bobby Smith, along with Ron Hall, making the tackle. Kitchen now, Bobby Smith playing safety. Bruins using a 6 2 3 defense. The wing back from the left goes in motion. Here is a keeper, Stevens, shooting a pass complete on the 44, up to the 50 yard line. On the completion goes Judge Dixon, tackled by Kermit Alexander at that point, and the Gophers have another first down on that play, good for 12 yards. That's the fifth first down of the game for Minnesota, Fred. UCLA has four. The score is... It's here. Jerry Jones is in at fullback now. Wing T to the left this time. Bruins with a 6-2-3 defense. Sandy Stevens hands off to Muncie. Muncie finds an opening, gets to the 45-yard line of UCLA before he is brought down. Brought down by safety man Bobby Smith. Smith, apart from his tailback duties, and he was not utilized much offensively until this year, is a very fine defensive performance. Nice game there. The Golden Gophers with second and five, and UCLA's 45. The wingman is out to the left this time, as Stevens calls signals. Here is the, yeah, that's a keeper by Stevens after he faked the handoff, drove to the 40-yard line. Foster Anderson finally brings him down. It is not quite a first down. It'll be just short. Third down and not very much to go for Minnesota. Already leading UCLA 7-3. Steve Bounds is now in there playing side by side. The wingman outside to the left again. This is Mulholland outside left this time. Stevens gives off to Hunt, and Munsey is tackled on the line of scrimmage on a slant to the left. Let's see whether he made that first down or not. Steve Bowens hit him. It's going to be very close. He did not make it, and it's fourth down and about six inches to go. They can tell from the positioning here because he needs to get up to that yard marker and just a little beyond it. Now Jim Wheeler is in a tackle. Right on that play, UCLA for the first time today went to a seven going for this first down. Fourth and inches, they're going to go for it. Stevens going for it, he's got it. Off his own left side that time, Bob Stevens of UCLA tackled Sandy Stevens, and he went behind Malvena, who is a very fine offensive guard, got the first. Here's a spread, split right in, wing back out to, to the left, and split backs. Sandy Stevens, first and ten for Minnesota, calling signals here. Another man in motion, Stevens keeping now the pitch back. Fumble, and I believe, let's see, a big pile up on the 37-yard line. It may have been recovered by Minnesota. Jerry Jones, the fullback, fumbled it and recovered it. Bill Oram was in there on him immediately. Cairns is in now in place of Muncy, playing the right half, or wing back position. UCLA's high up around the chin strap second down and 10 to go on the ucla 37 yard line same formation split right and flanker out wide left the other two backs backs are split here is back to pass as steven shoots one out here it's complete on the 29 yard line spilled immediately is tom hall the left end that was a beautiful pass well directed well thrown bob stevens hit the receiver and this is very close to a first down here as his forward progress moved it to the 27 yard line as he was hit at the point he made contact with the ball on the 29 play good for eight stevens this year and now it's third down stevens has a wing back Cairns out wide to the right. Gives off to his fullback, Jerry Jones, piling through there for the first down and more inside the 25-yard line of UCLA. First down it is. Mitch Dimkich made the tackle. Now Judge Dixon comes back in at fullback, replacing Jerry Jones. Jones has seen some very fine service for the Gophers this year while playing behind Judge Dixon. He's a good one. Minnesota 25-yard line. They were stymied before. 
when they fumbled and UCLA recovered on the 30. Flanker wide right with a split left end. Sandy Stevens rolls out, has lots of time, throws one upfield here. Complete on the 13-yard line to Bob Deegan, the right end, knocked out of bounds immediately. Knocked out by Bobby Smith. Sandy Stevens lofting a fine one, going back deep that time to throw. And he had time, and he got that one good for nine yards, and this puts the ball on the 13-yard line. Nice blocking, incidentally, by Judge Dixon. For on the 13-yard line. Second down and only about a foot. That was just short of a first down on that nine-yard play. Wing back outside of the left. Wing T formation. The give is to Cairns. Cairns going wide. He is hit on about the 12 to 13 yard line, but should have the first down here. Dave Gubb, strong side end for UCLA, bringing him down. That's a first down for the Golden Gophers. And back into the ball game comes Bill Muncy. The Gophers leading 7 to 3 with 523 remaining in the first half, according to the clocks on both ends of the field here now. UCLA scored first in the ball. Getting a first down on the seven yard line, then settling for an 18 yard line field goal, a 28 yarder by Bobby Smith. Since then it's been Minnesota all the way. Way back from the right in motion is Monse Stevens on a keeper, going down to the 10, hit inside the 10 yard line, legs striving hard, he gets to about the eight yard line. Stevens is a hard one to bring down. Dave Gibbs and Bob Stevens haul down Sandy Stevens. So it'll be a second down play. They're their first down needed, if this is important, and it may be, is to about the three-yard line. Second down, coming up here. Campbell comes in and plays it. UCLA goal once more. Wing T to the right. UCLA gets into a seven-man line here. Wing back is in motion to give us to the fullback driving. Is Jerry Jones getting down to about the six-yard line before he's brought down by Ron Hall? It's closer to the five than the six. Let's call it the five-yard line. Third down, five-yard line. Here's a big third down play. Third and three for the Gophers. Wing T to the right. Sandy Stevens calling signals. The Bruins utilizing virtually a seven-man line. Man in motion. They keep by Stevens. He's hit on the four-yard line. A nice tackle by Ron Hall, who followed the uh, Stevens, the quarterback, well on that one. He faked to the first man, rolled out to his left, and cut in nicely. And he still had a trailer back there that he could have thrown to. He drove it to the three-and-a-half-yard line. Not the three-and-a-half. And it's a fourth down play coming up with a yard to go. Here's a tense moment in this Rose Bowl game. Foster Anderson back in at left tackle for UCLA. Fourth down, ball on the three-yard line. Fourth down on a yard. Wing T to the right. Sandy's made three-yard line. Fourth down on a yard. Wing T to the right. Sandy Stevens. Bruins with a seven-man line. The other four drawn in very tight. Stevens giving. And as it all into the end zone for a touchdown by Bill Munsey. Bill Munsey scores to make it 13 to 3. Well, the Gophers that time drove 75 yards for their touchdown. We're not to be denied. Grudgingly, when they got close, and in Minnesota is now up to a 13-3 lead as they get set for the try for extra point with Blaska doing the holding and Leckler doing the kicking. It's placed by Blaska. Here's the kick. It's blasted right through the uprights, and the score is Minnesota 14, UCLA 3, with less than three minutes to play in the first half. Check. That was one of the longest sustained drives that we have seen in a good number of years here at the Rose Bowl. Moving 75 yards in 17 plays, the Golden Gophers have extended their lead over the UCLA Bruins, 14 to three. 14 of the 17 plays were rushes. Stevens threw three times, connected three times, and overall it was 75 yards in 17 plays with Munsey finally going in from the three-yard line. Munsey this year on the season scored 18 points. 
He carried the ball 56 times, averaging just under four yards a carry. I believe to be commended is the expert field generalship being exhibited by Sandy Stevens. He is mixing up his offense so well with slant plays, with an occasional pass, with power up the middle, with his own run pass option outside that is keeping the UCLA defenders completely stymied down there and keeping them at their very best to contain Minnesota at all. At this juncture, it's 14 to three. And how the Gophers had one man, to, one man too many, and so Jerry Jones comes off the field. Here's the kick. This one goes into the end zone. It's being run. No, it's fumbled in there by Alexander. He can now touch it down, and he does. Every, every now and then, Chick, you, you see somebody back there just let the ball roll dead in the end zone, and the other team comes charging on it. Now there seems to be a penalty marker. Just a moment. They may have to kick once again. I'll tell you, boy. UCLA lining up. Again here in the end over formation to the left. It's given on the reverse to Kermit Alexander. He's being trailed as he comes around, gets only up to the line of scrimmage and no more. That reverse play, after working well on the first drive, has been stopped completely by Minnesota. Benson stopping at that time. They line up in a hurry, wasting no time. Same formation, except that they have the split left end this time. They line up in a hurry, wasting no time. Same formation except that they have the split left end this time, single wing to the right. Ball comes back to the tailback. It's Hafner carrying, getting through for about three yards. Mike Hafner, sophomore from Baldwin Park, California, carrying the ball, tackled by Sunday and by Jack Park, who's in at left hand. Nixon comes off the field. Jerry Jones is back in to replace him. Ezell Singleton is now in, playing a tailback in place of Mike Hafner. He's the third tailback the Bruins have used. Keith Jensen, of course, has been in only to punt. They serpentine out to the left, which means single wing strong side to the left. Then they have the end over with a split left end. Flanked out wide to the left here. Back to pass is Singleton being rushed. Whoa, oh, he's caught back here on the 14-yard line. Hurled down for a loss. And with 1.45 remaining, UCLA will have a fourth down situation. That was on third and seven. Sunday and Campbell brought him down. Campbell, a junior. Mulholland and Bill Muncy are the twin safety men, and now Sandy Stevens goes back as well as the short man. Snap back from center. He has time. Gets a long spiral off toward midfield. Taken, fumbled on the 49 and picked up immediately by Mulholland. Down to the 45, down to the 40. Tackled on the 34-yard line in UCLA territory, and a penalty marker goes down on the 32. While they check this penalty, let's uh, let our stations identify themselves. We'll pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WGY 10 on your radio dial and WGFM Schenectady. A holding penalty here against Minnesota. The marker back here on the 43. That was a 45-yard punt, by the way, by uh, Keith Jensen. Quarterback Tom King at left half, Jim Cairns at right half, Jerry Jones the fullback. Wing tee to the right with the right end split just a bit. Pitch back and a drive right back off the left side by Cairns. Cairns gets up to the 45 in Minnesota territory for a gain of three. Second down, seven. Stopped by Tom Gutman. John Walker from Reseda, California, also assisting one of the Minnesota men getting up very slowly here, and time is called for him with 40. Wing back out, wide to the left, second down, seven of the 45 in Minnesota territory, less than a minute to go here. The Bruins in a 6-2-3 defense. Here's a thrust off the right side. Jones getting only a couple of yards on the play. Jerry Jones, the fullback, getting up to about the 47 to 48 yard line before Tom Payton brings him down. Tom Payton, a senior guard from Glendale, California. Monson, who's been in the left hand. Goodman is in at right hand for UCLA. Time ticking away here, 12 seconds. Here's the third down play on the 48-yard line. Stevens rolls out, keeps it himself up to the 50, the 45, down to the 42-yard line. He'll have a first down, but time is running out on the first half here. And there is the end of the 
first half with the score, Minnesota 14, UCLA 3. Halftime here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Matt Hessler with Chuck Kern. It's been a pleasure to handle the first half of play-by-play. -play. Chick will share this halftime, and you'll get set done for the second half of play. But how do you see the first half and things that have happened here at the Rose Bowl so far? Well, the first half of the ball game has to be nodded in the direction of Minnesota. The Gophers, stunned by a UCLA field goal with 8.39 left in the first quarter, came roaring back took advantage of a fumble recovery, scored the touchdown, Leckler's BAT. Minnesota grabbed a 7-3 lead that it not only protected but enhanced with 2.47 left in the first half with another seven-pointer. And here at halftime, it's 14-3. First downs, unofficially, Minnesota with nine and UCLA with four. As we mentioned several times during the first half, some of the nation's outstanding sports writers to be our halftime guests. Wilfred Smith of the Chicago Tribune, Tom Seiler of the Knoxville Sentinel, and our own great sports writer from the Los Angeles Times, Mr. Paul Zimmerman. Zim, that was a pretty interesting first half. It certainly was, Chick. Um, unfortunately, the Bruins have to go into Minnesota's power with their... Uh, with their sweet plays, and then, uh, gee, I, uh, those Minnesota uh, ends and tackles have certainly been decimating that interference, haven't they? The entire Minnesota defense has been great. I thought Bobby Bell was an absolute standout. There was no question about it. He was terrific in there. And, uh, they, he made uh, poor Bobby Smith eat that ball several times when, uh, when he attempted the pass, and it looks like the Bruins' only hope is on the reverse of the pass, and, of course, their pass isn't very good. It hasn't been very good all year. As you and I have both known, Minnesota held six of its nine opponents this year, rushing to less than 72 yards a game, and we can certainly see why this afternoon. We certainly can. They were caught napping there on that first drive when uh, when uh, Alexander, uh, Kermit Alexander, went on those two sweeps, but uh, that's the only time that they've been in trouble. Did you notice how they've been eating up that reverse since? Oh, yes. They... Uh, Kermit manages to get to the line of scrimmage sometimes. Last year, uh, having had the pleasure of uh, broadcasting the game, and uh, I know you had the same pleasure of being here watching it, thinking back to then and to today, Sandy Stevens is a much improved all-around ball player, particularly I think he throws a better pass. He certainly does, Chick. Uh, and, uh, he has he's completed six. He gets credit for five because one of them was nullified by a penalty, but he's completed six uh, passes and, and no incompletions. Uh, and, of course, he's mixing up his plays wonderfully well. He, he's putting uh, the boys in there uh, through the line and, uh, and has only kept the ball two or three times. Uh, his big play, really. Uh, actually, you've answered my next question because earlier in the game, I had commented that his play call execution has been flawless. I think so. Uh, you look at that uh, drive of 75 yards and 17 plays there, and then and he, uh, he uh, hit him inside and hit him outside, and then he'd throw the pass. And, and, and they'd, uh, the poor Bruin defense, they didn't know what to do. I, I had, didn't either. I had him at 14 rushes on that play and three passes, and uh, covering, as you say, 75 yards. It was one of the longest sustained drives that we have seen this year. It certainly is, and then such a beautiful play. Uh, that first, uh, they manhandle the inside that drawing line pretty well when they're on offense, don't they? Sir? I think in honest reporting, we have to point to Minnesota and give them the first half. Well, we certainly do. <laughs> they're a fine football team, beautifully coached by Murray Warmath, and I imagine right now Billy Barnes is in the dressing room trying to shake UCLA into some kind of a scoring machine here in the second half and something to halt the threat of the always tough Minnesota offense. Paul Zimmerman of the Los Angeles Times, you've been to a lot of Rose Bowl games. How many? Well, I've seen them all since Roy Regals unfortunately ran the wrong way. Um, that's 1929. Did you ever see a nicer day? Never saw a more beautiful day in my life. Minnesota may not like it too well, but they seem to be enjoying it. Uh, I was in Minneapolis a week. I was in Minneapolis the day the Minnesota team left to come out here, and the snow was right up to their knees. I know they liked it. <laughs> I'm sure they like it. Uh, they, they, they seem to relish it. I've certainly enjoyed talking to you, Paul. Thank you very much, and Happy New Year. Same to you, Chick. It's always wonderful to talk to you. Thank you. Paul Zimmerman, ladies and gentlemen, of the Los Angeles Times, and we'll have more of the halftime activities. In
Well, here at halftime of the Rose Bowl, we have a gentleman who is out here from Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville News Sentinel, Tom Tyler. I know he's viewing this game with very mixed emotions today because of the fact that there are some Tennessee boys, pupils of General Bob Nayland, on both sides. And there are four all told, aren't there? Yes, uh, Murray Warman's uh, oldest uh, assistant in point of service is Denver Crawford, and Bill Barnes' oldest assistant in point of service is Deke Brackett. And, of course, all four of them played at the University of Tennessee, Fred. As a matter of fact, Warmoth and uh, Brackett played on the same team. And Bill Barnes came along a little bit later, and Denver Crawford came along about ten years later. And I think uh, all of those Tennessee football teams were pretty well-drilled, tough, hard-nosed football teams, as they say. Yes, they were fundamental football teams, but uh, both of these boys have gone pretty far away, actually, from their teachings, I might say. Well, they certainly have. Boy, what you're talking about is this is a little more wide open than uh, they might have played. Oh, yes. Of course, uh, UCLA still plays a single wing, but uh, they use a lot of flankers, as the people have noticed on uh, TV and the people here in person, too. Uh, he's used a lot of spreads. And, of course, Murray has gone away from the single wing entirely as far as labels go because he's playing a, a wing T. But I think both of them are still power football teams, don't you? Oh, they definitely are. And certainly they have the material, especially Minnesota in this ball game, they have a lot of power. Well, they've got a real, look, what looks to me like a real solid line. Matter of fact, they've got two good lines. And right up to this point, they look a little bit too strong for UCLA. What's been uh, the principal impression you've gained of this first half so far? Well, the thing that impressed me on that very fine Minnesota drive, 75 yards, was that uh, at no time did they have to make long yardage on third down. And, of course, that's a marvelous position to be in. If you would, uh, I know you have, but if you, anybody checked the play-by-play, play, you'll notice that on third down four different times, the yardage was one yard or two yards. And, boy, that's money from home when you can get to third down and only have a yard or two to make the first down. And that's exactly what Minnesota did. They would get five yards on one play and four yards on the next play or two yards on one play and seven on the next one. And uh, it's pretty easy to keep a drive going when you're eating the yardage up like that. Well, Tom Sawyer, uh, I know that you're going to take quite an impression of this game uh, back to Knoxville, Tennessee. What do you, you've been out here previously, though, for the Rose Bowl, I know. Yes, I was out here one time. Um, uh, oddly, it was when UCLA was involved. I saw UCLA play Illinois in 1947, just 15 years ago. And that's the last time I've been out here, but I hope to come back again in the future. It's a couldn't ask for a be more beautiful setting than this, and, of course, the day is absolutely ideal. Well, I know that you're going to have uh, mixed emotions continuing throughout this ball game for both Coach Hort Murray Warmath and uh, Coach Bill Barnes, but it looks to be a good second half. Oh, I think it will be, and, of course, we just hope that both of them will play real well because they're fine young men, and both of them, I feel, are very fine, solid coaches. Well, thank you very much, Tom Siler, for being our guest here at halftime. Thank you. Tom Siler, the sports editor of the Knoxville, Tennessee News Sentinel, our halftime guest here at the Rose Bowl, along with Paul Zimmerman of the L.A. Times and Wilfred Smith, the sports editor of the Chicago Tribune, as we've been getting impressions of this ball game uh, from three different sections of the country. Final scores in the other four games played today. In the Orange Bowl, LSU defeated Colorado 25-7. In the Sugar Bowl at New Orleans, it was Alabama 10 and Arkansas 3. And in the Cotton Bowl, it was Texas 12 and Old Miss 7. Going over, this one is 14 to 3, Minnesota at halftime after UCLA had scored first and led by a 3 to nothing margin. In the early minutes of the first period, Minnesota came back to take the lead at the end of the first quarter, 7-3, scored another touchdown on a fine 75-yard drive in the second period. The one Tom Sider was discussing just a moment ago, and Sandy Stevens, when he has thrown, has needed the yardage, and he has thrown very well. In fact, uh, there's a conference captain, John Malvana there, out on the field with the uh, referee, Ray Meyer. Across the way, the UCLA Bruins gather around Coach Bill. In the backfield, Bobby Smith, Elmos Thompson, Alexander, and Stevens. All right here is the run-up and the kick. It goes back into the end zone by a yard taken by Tommy King. Straight up the field to the 5. King to the 10, the 15, and up and at the 20. Falls forward to the 21. Fine tackle by All-American center Ron Hall. So, already leading 14-3. to The white-helmeted, white-trousered, 
maroon jersey trimmed in uh, golden numerals. Minnesota Golden Gophers will go to work on the 21. Carry the ball. All right, Stevens is the quarterback. Slot back to the left is Dixon. Waiting for the ball to go back against a 6-2-3 defense. It's handed off to the big fullback, and Dixon hits the hole and hits it hard at right guard. Gets a couple three yards as Mel Prophet, a 6'5", 205-pound sophomore from Los Gatos, California, brings him down. Second and seven. The ball on the 20... 48th edition, Minnesota leading UCLA by a score of 14 to 3. Again, a 6 2 3 defense against the uh, slot formation. The handoff in the backfield, a little mix up. Then it's given to Bill Munsey, and Munsey diving over a left guard gets across the 25 and up to about the 27. Munsey took a chest high handoff that time from Stevens. We'll give a two man stop on the tackle, Marshall Shirk and Bobby Smith. The Rose Ball in Pasadena. Wing back to the right side is Munsey. It is third and three. A seven diamond defense. A rollout by Stevens. Wants to pass. He does. Complete to the 30-yard line to Mulholland. And Mulholland's bumped out of bounds at about the 34 by Stevens. That's Bob Stevens who plays the blocking back position for UCLA. Sandy Stevens is the boy that threw it. They spell their names differently. UCLA Stevens is S-T-E-B-E-N-S. While Sandy Stevens is S-T-E-P-H-E-N-S. A first down for Minnesota. Back to the right side is Muncie. It's a 6-2-3 defense. First and 10. In motion goes Mulholland. The handoff is given beautifully to Dixon, and Dixon rips over the right side above the 40 and all the way up to the 43. And Bobby Smith finally brought him down. The Clarendon, Pennsylvania boy, 6'2", 214-pound senior, may have a measurement here. They're taking a close look from our vantage point, and we're looking down almost on this identical chalk stripe, the 43, it would appear that he possibly has made it by four to six inches. Checking the chain tight, they have made it by approximately the length of the football. 14 to three, Minnesota leading first. Slot back to the left side is Mulholland. Six to three defense again for UCLA. Stevens with the long count for Minnesota. He's got it. He gives off to Dixon, swings it right tackle, gets above the 45 and up to the 48-yard line. Mel Prophet, that six-foot-five-inch giant playing defensive end, and Kermit Alexander, the wingback, made the two-man stop. So at the 48, it'll be second down and five. The ball is at the hash mark, 18 yards in from the far of the eastern sideline, giving the line to its right. They got a slot back to the left side. That's Mulholland, 6-2-3 to the fence. Sandy Stevens, the quarterback. He stuffs it into the midsection of Muncie, and Muncie swinging at left guard, rips across the 50 and down to the 46-yard line of UCLA. Chuck Hicks from Memphis, Tennessee, 6'195 pounder, the boy that made the stop, and injured on the play is Dave Mulholland. Appears to have hurt his shoulder. Mulholland comes out. He's the son, by the way, of Ray King, the 1937 Gopher captain who flew his own plane out here today to see his boy play. All right, it's first and 10 on the 46 of UCLA. Slot back to the left side is King. 6-2-3 defense, a roll out to the right side by Stevens, wants to pass, cocks his arm at the 50, he's being chased, he's in trouble. Sees some light and he runs it to the 45, to the 40, directs traffic with his hand and gets to the 35-yard line. Chuck Hicks finally made the stop. Stevens, showing some of the electrifying skill that won him the most valuable player honors and All-American honors, most valuable player in the Big Ten, All-American honors, of course, for the nation, started off toward the far the eastern sideline, ran into a traffic jam, couldn't find anybody to pass to, reversed his field, directed traffic with one hand, held the ball with the other, and got down to the 35. All right, Campbell replaces Deegan at right end for Minnesota. Slot back to the right side is Muncie, first and ten. On the UCLA 35. UCLA 6-2-3 defensively again. Stevens has it. Up the middle of Judge Dixon over his own left guard. And he is knocked down near the 32-yard line. Tackle, Bob Stevens, the right linebacker. And the guard, Walt Dathy. The ball is spotted at the 32, where it'll be second and seven. 14-3, Minnesota leading. We're in the third quarter. Chick Hearn with Fred Hessler, the 48th edition of the Rose Bowl game. Perfect football weather. Second and seven, slot back to the right is Bill Muncie again, the Uniontown, Pennsylvania flash. 
Stevens, the quarterback, stuffs it into the midsection of Tommy King over right tackle with a flag down. King gets down to the 26-yard line, possibly the 25. But as we call for you, a flag on the play. Mel Prophet made the stop. Illegal use of the hands. Offensive holding against Minnesota. Stevens mixes his plays very well, doesn't he, Fred? He certainly does. And uh, by the way, the return of the game since. All right, split the left end, Tom Hall. Flanker back to the right side by 15 yards is Muncie. 6 2 3 defense against them. Sandy Stevens back to throw from the 45. Downfield and batted down beautifully on a fine defensive play by Mel Prophet. Prophet is doing a great job defensively this half for UCLA. The pass was intended for Bill Muncie. Munsey went straight downfield, hooked in toward the interior of the grid at the 40, and just when it looked like he might get it, big 6-5 Mel Prophet knocked it down. Prophet didn't play last year, was out because of a knee injury. He's a very fine basketball player, too. A right flanker back to the right side, third and 22, the ball in the UCLA 47. Split the left end hall. Muncie is the flanker by 15 yards. In motion goes Tommy King. Roll out by Sandy Stevens. He's back to the 45, throwing long. Way downfield, attended for Muncie. Incomplete at the five. Check by Bobby Smith. Got just a hand on it, and then the receiver almost had a chance to get it. Really a throw there. If Bobby Smith's fingers were about three quarters of an inch shorter, Minnesota would be leading by six more points. Line up and Stevens goes back into punt formation, standing on his own 39. Ezell Singleton stands on the 11 yard line for UCLA. There is a wobbly spiral kick, fair catch, 14 yard line. St Singleton takes it, and the referee, Ramey Meyer, will put the ball in play at the 14. The ball is about 22 yards in from this, the western sideline. UCLA trails 14 to 3. Nine minutes, 24 seconds to be played here in the third quarter. And down on the field, we're getting a timeout call. But there's timeout on the field with the score, Minnesota 14, UCLA 3. UCLA is single wing right. The wing back is Alexander. The tailback is Bobby Smith. And the fullback is Zeno. The ball is given on a reverse to Alexander. He's in trouble back in the five. Cuts up field to the 10, the 15, the 20, and tripped up near the 23 or 4. A fine play by Kermit Alexander when it looked like he was in trouble back at around the five-yard line as he made a loop in his run. He got a great block from Don Venna. And Venna's block cleared him up the far of the eastern sideline. The referee brings the ball in 18 yards, Venna, by about 15 yards. Wing back to the right is still Alexander, single wing right. The ball is to the tailback Bobby Smith, tries it right tackle and gets above the 25 to the 27-yard line, following three-man blocking that was crushed out and snuffed out by that strong forward wall of Minnesota. On the tackle, John Campbell and Julian Hook. Hook is the left guard, Campbell the right end by 15 yards is Don Venna. He is 6'2", 195. Single wing right against a 6'2", 3. The ball is back to half near the tailback. He's hit and dropped. Back at the 20. Johnny Campbell made the tackle. Let's get in station identification. We pause for 10 seconds. This is WGY. Defensively for Minnesota. All right, Keith Jensen's in a tailback. Might be a quick kick for UCLA. That's what it's going to be. He steps back two strikes, fakes the kick on a reverse. He gives to Alexander. He loops again back to the 10. He's collared at the 15, gets away from the man to the 20, and he is knocked down at the 22. UCLA has been known to do some quick kicking on most any down. They also have been known to punt on third down. They put in their kicker, Keith Jensen. He dropped back in the usual... Uh, quick two-step count for the quick kick. Jensen, this year, 42 punts, averaging 38 yards. Stevens, Munsey, and Mulholland deep for Minnesota. Kicking from his own 13, Jensen, a wobbly kick, taken at the 47-yard line, taken by Munsey, runs backwards to the 40, back to the 35. He runs away from it, comes up field to the 39. A flag goes down, and so does Munsey at the 40. We got clipping coming up, I believe, against Bobby Bell. The official down here pointing to big number 78, Bobby Bell. And I believe the call will be clipping. We will see. He was trying to aid his ball carrier, Muncie, who was in trouble. He gave a lot of ground. He caught the ball at the 47, looped clear back inside the 35-yard line, came over to this, the western sideline, started up field again. To be a priest. He made his choice between Minnesota and the seminary, and here he is playing football. 
All right, here we go. First and ten, the ball on the 18-yard line. Slot back to the right side is Karen's in there now. Stevens gives up the middle to Jones, the fullback, and Jerry rams to the 20-yard line, maybe got a foot or so above it before the right linebacker, Bob Stevens, 185-pound junior, made the stop along with Don Venna. Right is Karen's. The ends are in tight. UCLA is 6-2-3 defensively. In motion goes Mulholland. The ball is to Stevens. Keeps it. Runs over right tackle and gets only a couple of yards. He tried to cut back sharply, and as he did so, he found blue-shirted, the golden-helmeted UCLA Bruins all over him. Don Venna leading the assault defensively. Now Venna is in sunshine. The other two-thirds in shadow now. All right. Wing back to the right is Cairns. Still the 6-2-3 defense. A rollout to the right side by Stevens. Passing to the far sideline. Incomplete at the 30 over the intended receiver, Karens. Karens going back on a down-and-out pattern to the far eastern sideline. So it'll be fourth down coming up for Minnesota. For UCLA, standing on his own 45. Jones will punt from the 10. High pass from center. Goes up and gets it and gets away. A beautiful kick. Look at that thing go with a spiral. Taken at the 29-yard line by Singleton. Steps back to the 27. Starts up field at the 30, the 35, the 37-yard line. Oh, that was a beautiful high spiral. Singleton was playing up a little shallow. He had to go back under it like an outfielder. Took it at about the 29. Stepped backwards two more steps. Then started up field after taking that 48-yard punt by Jerry Jones. There's timeout on the field now with the... 37-yard line UCLA territory. Hits the end over, split out on the left side. Now with the ball is Smith. He goes back on a pass pattern, running laterally across the 30. Being chased, he's caught. He's down at the 35. John Campbell, 6'3", 201-pounder. Quite a football star, this boy Campbell, and he's only a junior for Murray Warman. It'll be second down and 12. 14 to 3, Minnesota leads. End over to the right side. Venice put out by 15 yards. The wing back is Kermit Alexander against a virtual seven diamond. The ball back to Smith. The big rush is on. Smith throws after he's hit. Out in the flat. It's completed to Kermit Alexander. Alexander took the ball at about the 41 yard line and he's hurled back to the 39. They'll spot it near the 41. Dave Mulholland was the first to hit him. And after that, Boy, a lot of them took a shot at him. So the ball spotted on the 41. It'll be third and six for UCLA. A quarterback. Third and six. Single wing to the left side. 6-2-3 defense. The ball on a reverse given to Alexander. He's headed trap way back at the 29. John Campbell. The great Wadena, Minnesota boy, in on the stop again, and they spotted it to 28. To receive the punt, fourth and 19, Jensen will kick for UCLA from his 15. There is the kick, the high wobbly kick, fair catch is called for, and fumbled, free ball near the 45, UCLA's got it in Minnesota. Covered by Ronnie Hull of UCLA at the 44 of Minnesota. Second fumble Hull has recovered today. The end is over to the right side, split out by 12 yards. The ball back to Smith. He's back to throw. Gets the rush. Runs through into the 45. He's to the 40 and down hard near the 37. Bill Munsey. Boy, to make the stop. The ball carrier Bobby Smith of Compton, California. Aided and abetted by a good block by the right guard Dave Stout of Playa del Rey. 5'10", 213-pound junior, makes it second and two on the 37. A short three to go from the 37. Single wing right. The ball is back to Bobby Smith, tailback. Swings to the right, cuts in sharply, gets the first down inside the 35 and down to the 32. To CLA. Picks up another first down. And on the field, hobbling with what appears to be an ankle injury is Jim Wheeler of Minnesota. He comes to the sideline, and in goes Carl Eller. 
The end is looped over, spread out on the left side by 10 yards. Mike after the tailback, the ball back to him. Swings out left and then comes in sharply over the guard hole inside the 30 and gets down to the 27-yard line as UCLA's running game is fighting off short, but uh, yardage here that is beginning to move them now. Single wing to the right side. 6-2-3 defense. Actually almost a seven diamond. The ball to the fullback, Thompson. Full spinner in the middle, down to the 20-yard line. Bell made the stop at the 20 on Almos Thompson. 23 seconds remain to be played. Luke the lend over to the left side and put him out by 15 yards. The ball back to the tailback. Bobby Smith swings at left tackle inside the 20. Gets to about the 18-yard line. And that's the end of the third quarter with a score. Minnesota 14, UCLA 3. And that's the end of the third quarter with a score, Minnesota 14, UCLA 3. While the supply last and save 48 cents. Our fine technical director today is Johnny Pollock. 14 to 3 the score. Same score we had at the end of the first half. The club's battled pretty squarely there in that third quarter, Fred Hessler. Well, they certainly have, and the UCLA Bruins, if they can capitalize on this particular drive, could find themselves very much alive in this ballgame, Chick. And really set up a situation for these 100,000 fans to scream about. The sun is still very bright here in California. All right, second down and eight on the 18 of Minnesota. Single wing right. Running the weak side is the tailback Bobby Smith. Tries the tackle hole and gets down to the 15-yard line, stumbling the last couple of strides after Julian Hook hooked him around the ankle and sent him sprawling. Hook is 189-pound. UCLA with the ball trailing 14 to 3. Fourth quarter. Single wing to the right. The ball to Thompson, full spinner by the fullback across the line of scrimmage and then knocked down very hard near the 13. Oh, he was hit head on by Carl Eller, 6'6", 234-pound, 19-year-old sophomore. Single wing right, the end is over, split to the right side is Benna by 15 yards. The ball is fumbled. Thompson falls on it for UCLA, but the ball will go to Minnesota on the fourth down play at the 17. Well, this, of course, dispels what hopes the Bruins had at this particular stage of getting back on the scoreboard. The first downs now show Minnesota 13, UCLA 7. The scoreboard, Minnesota 14, UCLA 3, with 13 minutes and 28 seconds remaining. The Gophers have the ball, and here's Chick. It's the team. It's the T formation. Slot back to the left side is Dave Mulholland. Split the left end by a couple of yards. UCLA going 6-2-3 defensively. Stevens gives the ball off to Munzee. Munzee the right half slants at left tackle and gets above the line of scrimmage and almost to the 20-yard line. Bill Munzee on the year carried 56 times, averaging just under four yards. Dave Mulholland, the other halfback, carried 52 times, averaging three and a half yards. The fullback, Dixon, carried 82 times, averaging three and a half. Stevens was the big man, carrying 110 times and averaging 4.4. And seven. Slot back to the left again is Mulholland. Stevens giving it the long count, leading 14 to three. In motion goes Munsey. Stevens gives up the middle of Jones, the fullback, and he finds a hole that rips him forward to the 26-yard line. Head down and legs churning, and finally brought down by Tom Gutman. Assisted by Joe Bowens. 14 to three the score, Minnesota leading. Gonna have a measurement down here, here comes the chain gang. First and 10 for Minnesota on the 26 yard line, Minnesota territory, slot back to the right is Muncie. The ball to Stevens, Stevens up the middle, gives the ball to Mulholland, big hole over the 35 and all the way up to the 38 yard line. Bobby Smith stopping Dave Mulholland of Fargo, North Dakota, a senior at 188 pounds. And it's another first down for Minnesota. Slot back to the left, Mulholland. The ball on the 38-yard line, Minnesota Territory. 
UCLA clinging to its 6-2-3 defense. In motion goes Muncie. Up the middle, the ball to Jones, and Jones the fullback above the 40 to the 42 or 3 yard line. Ramey Meyer down there, taking the ball out from beneath that pile of jerseys. UCLA, as we look across with binoculars, appears to be calling defensive signals. Second and five on the 43, Minnesota Territory. Slot back to the left is Mulholland. Still a make it a seven diamond for UCLA now. All right, the ball to Stevens. Stevens gives off to Judge Dixon. The fullback runs it right guard above the 45 and biting off yardage as he goes. He's up to the 48-yard line. Mel Prophet making the staff. Prophet is a sophomore, 6'5", 205. Jim Wheeler in at left tackle. Carl Eller out for the Gophers. It was on and less than a yard, about a foot to go. Wing back to the left side this time is Mulholland outside the left end. Seven diamond defense. The ball to Judge Dixon. Dives over right guard, and I think he got enough for the first down, but not much more. Joe Bowens of Rock Island, Illinois, a junior. He has a brother on the squad, Steve Bowens. Joe is a junior. Steve is a senior. First and ten for Minnesota. Muncie coming out. 37 carries on the year, average four and a half yards. First and ten. Slot back to the left is Mulholland. Stevens takes his time down there. Got the big lead. Gives the ball on a little pitch back to Karen. Swings in at the guard hole on the right side of the line. Gets above the 50 and down to the UCLA 46. <laughs> and Karen's, as I told you, weighing 168 pounds. Mel Prop at 205 pounds. I thought was going to run with him to the end zone. So the referee finally says, put that man down. Slot back to the left again is Mulholland. Split the left end by just a couple of yards. That's Hall. UCLA 6-2-3 defensively, almost an eight-man line. Second man through gets the handoff. Karen swings over on a slant left guard, gets down to the 40-yard line. Nice slant play running from his right halfback position. Tackle made by Chuck Hicks. And it's another first down for Minnesota. I think too often we talk about the backs and forget to credit the great linemen doing the blocking up front. Minnesota's forward wall. All right, first and 10. The ball in the 40 of UCLA. Slot back to the left is Mulholland. UCLA with two linebackers up tight behind a six-man line. The handoff is given to Cairns. Another slant play over left guard, and he's down to the 35 as Minnesota bites off five yards at a time. Ron Hull, the left linebacker, an All-American for UCLA, makes a stop. The ball is about equidistant between the sideline stripes on a football field that's beautifully green, perfectly conditioned, and now in the far or eastern stands are in sunshine, the rest of the saucer in shadow. Second and five, slot back to the right this time is Cairns. Stevens taking the long count once again. The right end, Campbell split by a couple of yards. Hand off to Judge Dixon, the fullback at left tackle, and he rams down to the 30. Another five-yard gain. Andy Von Son is the boy that made the stop. He's an Encino boy, 6'1", 195. Coming out is Mulholland, and in comes Tom King for Minnesota. In the line, Hall and Campbell, Leckler and Wheeler, Mulvena and Perkovich and Frisbee. 14 to three, seven and a half minutes to play. Minnesota leading, has the ball on the UCLA, 30, first and 10. Slot back to the right is Cairns. He goes in motion to his left. The ball is given to the second man through Tommy King, and the left halfback drives forward for four yards, changing the pattern a little bit. They've been getting five at a crack, and Tommy King, the senior from Edina, 188-pounder, gets four. Second down and six. Ron Hull and John Walker making the stop. This drive began way back on the Minnesota 17. Boy, when they get their hands on the ball, Fred, they believe in keeping it, don't they? They certainly have been, and this drive has been a well, well-handled drive by Sandy Stevens again, Chick. From the 26, it's second down and six. In motion comes King. The ball given off to, or did Stevens, yes, he kept the ball, and Stevens keeping going up the middle, stopped by Foster Anderson from San Gabriel, California, at the 23. Let's duck in identification. We pause 10 seconds. Third down and three for Minnesota on the 23 of UCLA. Slot back to the right is Cairns. UCLA in a seven-diamond defense. The ball to Dixon. Dixon, the fullback, rams to the 20-yard line, inches above it or inside of it, and I believe he's got another first down. Foster Anderson, the 226-pound right tackle for UCLA, made the stop, but not before Minnesota chalks up another first down. 
Six minutes to play. Minnesota leading 14 to 3. Jones in and Judge Dixon out at fullback for Minnesota. Dixon's a senior. Jones is a junior. First and 10. The ball on the 20 of UCLA. Slot back to the right, Cairns. 6 2 3 defense. The ball to Stevens. Stevens gives the ball off to Jones, and Jones, the fullback, fumbles as he's hit at about the 18. Let's see what we got over there. I believe the whistle had blown, and that's exactly right. The ball stays in the possession of Minnesota at the 18-yard line. Almos Thompson, the right backer, is the boy that made the stop. Coming out is Jones, and in goes Dixon on the wild card call from Murray Warmath, wearing the headset along the sideline. Eight yards to go for Minnesota. Down below us, the Minnesota Rooters, who have fled the snow country to come to the land of sunshine, really whooping it up here and enjoying it. They lead 14-3. Slot back to the right, Cairns. Boys moving around at the line of scrimmage. A flag goes down. Delay of the game against Minnesota. Two. 18 yards in from the eastern sideline. Football field to the left for Minnesota. Sideline to the right. Wing back this time is Cairns with the end in tight. Cairns to the right side. A rollout to the right side by Stevens. Pass is incomplete, intended for Deegan at around the 15-yard line. Actually, no one was near the ball. Perhaps the defensive man in the play, Ron Hull, as close as anyone for UCLA. That kills the clock with four minutes and 36 seconds remaining to be played. As we send this broadcast all over the world as well as these United States, split the left end hall. Flanker back to the right side is Cairns. Third and 12. Rolled out to the right side by Sandy Stevens, running laterally across the 30. Passes to the 10-yard line to Deacon, and he's down at the 8. Bob Deegan of Lyons, Illinois, 6'2", 202-pound senior, who caught five passes on the year. That's the first completion of this half for Sandy Stevens, who was 6 for 6 in the first half. Goal to go from the eight and a half yard line. Let's call it the nine, it's closer to that. Wing back to the left side is Tommy King. UCLA backs against the wall. Stevens on a rollout, cuts around right end, goes to the five and he's hammered down at the four. Bob Stevens made the tackle on Sandy Stevens. Minnesota stung here 17 to seven last year by Washington. Back today doing some stinging of their own. They have 20 first downs. Minnesota leading 14 to 3. Wing back to the left side is Tom King. UCLA right up there and virtually an eight-man line. The handoff to Judge Dixon at right tackle. He's held up at the three-yard line. Bobby Smith was the first to hit him, and after that he got some help from some of the other defensive backs. They spot the ball on the two. Where it'll be goal to go on third down. The wild card for UCLA takes Stevens out and brings Walker in with the defensive call. Third and two from the two. Two minutes and 49 seconds to play in the game. Minnesota leading 14 to three. Wing back to the left side is Tom King. Stevens with a long count. In motion goes Munsey. Roll out by Stevens. Keeps, goes over left tackle and scores. put the ball game in the refrigerator for keeps. Stevens out to a tremendous ovation. In to do the kicking will be Leckler. Holding the ball is Dwayne Blaska. There is the boot by Leckler and it's good. A flag goes down in the field. That's see what it is. Offside against UCLA. You know Minnesota's going to decline that and the scoreboard will remain reading Minnesota 21, UCLA 3. Well, there's time out on the field with the score, 21 to 3. Boy, there's been some great play in this game. I think one of the outstanding backs has to be Sandy Stevens. Reminds me of Dodger outfielder Wally Moon. He was a speedy halfback from Texas A&M. Is he a Gillette man? Oh, for years. Tom Tygen in the backfield. Judge Dixon will kick off for Minnesota. All right, there's the boot comes along this. The western sideline and out of bounds it goes. Al Fisher falls is in. Roland Mudd of Braddock, Pennsylvania, in for Minnesota. 
There is a high kick by Dixon. Bounces at the eight, past Bobby Smith, toward the corner, and out of bounds it goes. Referee throws a flag on the one-yard line over there. 2.36 to play if we ever get this kickoff underway. Bob McNeil now in for Minnesota and kicks off. Kicks to the 19-yard line taken by Bobby Smith. He's up to the 20, runs laterally across the 25, pursued by three men. Cuts back to the 24, back up to the 25, and knocked down at the 28-yard line. Bobby Smith was running that ball so easily that you almost envisioned him just running up and down a practice field. So the ball on the 29, the clock is moving, 2.15 to play. Minnesota has salted the victory, 21-3 over UCLA. Minnesota's first Rose Bowl victory, here a year ago defeated and back today to grab all the marbles. So they've the smell of success. Wing back to the left side for UCLA, single wing left. The ball is back to the tailback Singleton. Throws a little screen pass out into the flat, giving the ball to Zeno. He's up to the 25 to 30, the 35 to 40, and up to the 43 yard line. Dwayne Blaska made the stop. Joe Zeno, 6'1", 197, a junior, the boy that carried the ball on the screen pass thrown by Ezel Singleton. Timeout is called now on the field with the score, Minnesota 21, UCLA 3. Boy, this is quite a game in the long history of Rose Bowl performances. I've covered a lot of ground broadcasting these college games, and one thing that really impressed me around the country is the way the stores that cater to college people keep new Gillette right guard up front on display. The merchants tell me it's moving up to number one among men's deodorants. Right guard, you know, is a power spray deodorant. Just push the button, psst, psst, and you get 24-hour protection in two seconds. No more need to mess with old-fashioned creams. Gummy roll-ons, drippy hit-and-miss squeeze bottle sprays. Right Guard's power spray gets right through for complete coverage. Dries on contact, stops odor. It's easy to use, fast and convenient, men. You'll feel cool and refreshed, confident, too. Try rink is split out by 15 yards left. The power in the single wing is to the right against the 6-2-3. First and 10, Singleton back to throw. The big rush is on, tries to run through it. He can't. He is down at about the 36-yard line, cocked his arm as he was going down, then thought better of trying to throw from a prone position and held onto the ball. Now we've got a timeout call by UCLA again. And with UC sophomore for UCLA, in motion comes Houck, the ball back to Singleton, back to throw, out into the flat to the sideline, and it is a great catch along the sideline at the 48-yard line. Warmath is really screaming at the official that made the call of a good catch. Caught by Bill Houck, who just came into the game and went in motion in the single wing for UCLA. You think that sophomore is happy? He certainly is, and he didn't see much action during the regular season either, Check Very little playing time. That ball was caught right in front of Murray Warmath. In fact, I think Murray had a notion to reach out and deflect it. But how to play? Loop the end over to the right side. In motion goes Alexander. Single wing left. The ball to Singleton. Pass out in the flat. A checkoff pass behind the line to Alexander. Takes it at the 45. Runs up to the 50 and down to the 49 of Minnesota. Paul Benson of Granite Falls, Minnesota. A junior just into the game for the Gophers. Makes a stop. Coming in now is Dave Lochner. L-O-T-H-N-E-R more from Los Angeles, 6'5", 226 in a tackle for UCLA. Fourth and two, single wing to the left. Back to throw is Singleton. He's back to the 43. He's chased. He is in trouble. Way back to the 35. Look at him run. Cut the field. Put the ball under his arm at the 40. Misses three men. Eludes him beautifully. Still on his feet at the 45 and down at the 47. Listen to this crowd. Gibbs just into the game, through the block. Listen to the crowd counting off the seconds to play. Minnesota stopped it with six seconds, Check, but I don't think if there are any touchdowns scored, there will be any goal posts left. The rush is on at both ends of the field, and they're almost going down. On one end, they already are down, and on the Minnesota goal, they will be down in just a moment. There will be no crossbar at least, and there's one ball remaining. One upright at each end, and that's uh, one upright at each end, and that's uh, somewhat perilous at the moment. Perilous also for those who are below. And of course, uh, this is one of the traditional things. And there are plenty of kids who came out here who thought they'll return with a piece of that goalpost. <laughs> I think that's very dangerous, though. Boy, those things really splinter. 
All right, Minnesota takes over after that thrilling fourth down play. Runs one play. Quarterback sneak by Blaska. It's all over, and Minnesota wins it 21 to 3. That's the end of the game. The final score Minnesota's Golden Gophers under Murray Warmath 21, Billy Barnes, UCLA Bruins 3. Boy, they were hanging from the rafters here in Pasadena, 100,000 strong. And an estimated 50 million followed the action on radio and television. And when you tell that many people about a deal like Gillette's Big Bargain Special, you know it'll sell in a hurry, just like it did last year. Once again, here's what you get. A dollar dispenser of 15 Gillette Super Blue Blades and a giant can of Gillette Foamy Instant Lather. A dollar 98 value for only a dollar 50. You save 48 cents. If you've tried the new Gillette Super Blue Blade, you know how downright remarkable it is. How it gives all but unbelievable shaving comfort. Well, now is the time to lay in a supply of Super Blues. You save money and get Gillette Foamy too. Foamy's rich, full-bodied lather holds moisture against your beard, comes either regular or with cooling menthol. Remember, this Gillette bargain special won't last long. A dollar dispenser of Gillette Super Blue Blades plus a giant can of Foamy Instant Lather, a dollar ninety-eight value, forty-eight cents. Down below is the Minnesota Band. Let's pick up a few bars of that. We saw the entire Minnesota coaching staff carried off on the shoulders of the brawny Minnesota athletes. It was a great victory for the boys from back in Minneapolis and one that they richly deserved as they posted up 21st downs to UCLA's.